You are listening to the Way of Truth broadcast, and this broadcast service originates in the radio studios of the Church of God in Hagerstown, Maryland, United States of America. Wherever you are listening to our international broadcast, this is Alvin A. Craig, and we welcome you. We do thank the Lord for the privilege of sharing the Way of Truth broadcast with you from week to week. And we're opening our broadcast service today with the trio singing for us, I'm Depending on Jesus. I walk with my Savior each hour of the day. Our Heavenly Father, we are truly thankful that we know that we can depend upon you. We know that you are true. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. 
And we thank you for your precious word, which is forever settled in heaven. We thank you for the privilege of coming to you in prayer, bringing our burdens and our cares along with our thanksgiving and our praise. We thank you for life. We thank you for life in Christ. And we thank you for all the blessings of life. We thank you for our precious congregation today. And we are thankful for the privilege of sharing the gospel with them. As thy word goes forth in song and in spoken, we pray that the Holy Spirit will be able to convey it to hearts and make it a blessing to souls. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. It is a privilege to share the broadcast with you from week to week, and we are praying that it is a blessing to you. If so, it would be an encouragement to us to know. Again, at the close of our broadcast today, we'll be giving you our mailing address, and we do invite you to write us and let us know that our broadcast is a blessing to you. The second Sunday in May is Mother's Day, and among many Protestant denominations, the second Sunday in June is Children's Day, 
And the third Sunday of June is Father's Day. Now, I am certainly not against any of these occasions because it is fit and proper for us to give honor to mothers, to fathers, and to children. But I think you will agree with me that being a mother is a full-time job year-round, and being a father is also a full-time job a year around. Now, there is in the nation and world today seemingly a strong attack from the forces of evil against the family and what the family really is and what the family should be. And that's all the more reason why it is necessary for those who believe the Word of God to stand firm and steadfast for the truth. I make no apology for preaching the Word of God. The Scriptures tell us that the Word is forever settled in heaven. And the Scriptures also teach us that the Word is given to us to live by. And I believe the Bible. I endeavor to live it. I endeavor to preach it. And I trust that it will be a blessing as it goes forth even on this broadcast. Now, God is the one who told Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply. So God is the one who told Adam to be a father. And God is the one who told Eve to be a mother. And they were husband and wife. For God said it was not good for the man to be alone. And he said, I will make him a helpmate. And so he formed Eve and brought her to Adam and, in effect, performed the very first wedding ceremony. No, weddings did not come from some superstitious tribe of a few thousand years ago. Weddings or marriage is something that God ordained from the, for the family of man from the very beginning. And I would think that most should be aware of the fact that there is something in man that causes him to desire to be a provider and a protector. Yes, there's just something that God put in man that causes him to be a one who desires to provide and to protect. And this desire is fulfilled in marriage and fatherhood. I'm not saying that it is limited to that, but this desire is fulfilled in marriage and in fatherhood. And it's regrettable that more young men uh, are electing not to marry, but to attempt to satisfy their base desires in some other way through fornication and shacking up together. For God ordained marriage. For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Now, according to the Bible, the man was created in the image and glory of God. So we read in 1 Corinthians 11 and 7. Therefore, man needs to listen to God as to the role of man. I say man needs to listen to God as the role of man. Man has the role of headship in matters of this life. Regardless of what many want to think or advance today, the Bible teaches us that man has the role of headship in matters of this life. Man is over the woman I'm not saying now that she's a slave or that she's a second-class citizen. I'm speaking about headship. Man is over the woman, and the husband is the head of the wife. Notice what the Apostle Paul wrote in his letter to the Corinthian church, 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Here, Paul speaks of headship and of authority. And he says, every man is the head, or the man is the head of the woman, 
and that Christ is the head of the man, and that God is the head of Christ. What a beautiful picture here of rule and of authority. Whenever man acknowledges Christ as his head, as his ruler, it's going to go a long way in helping him to be the head of the wife and the head of the family. Man has a role of headship in the matters of this life. And I'm not talking about him being a dictator or a lord over God's heritage, but I am speaking about rule and authority. Now, man, in the matter of domestic affairs, God saw that it was not good that man be alone. We read this in Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 through 20. So God made a special companion for man, a woman, and I'm not talking about a woe man. I'm talking about something beautiful that God did. God did this because it was not good for a man to be alone. And speaking from the standpoint of a man, I certainly agree with what God said and what God did. So he, hel- he made Adam a helpmate. And they loved one another. Yes, they loved one another. Because they were children of God, and they had the love of God in their hearts, and God gave them love one for another. I've said numbers of times that a marriage license hanging on a wall does not keep a couple together. But if a couple really and truly love one another, you're not going to separate them, because they are bound And I do not say that in any undesirable way, but they are bound by the cords of love. And they want to stay together, and they will stay together, because they do love one another. God instituted marriage for man and woman. Yes, God instituted marriage not only for Adam and Eve, but for the family of man that was to follow. And we notice in this scripture where it speaks about him making the wife for the husband, and how the man is to forsake his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. Cleave is indicative of the commitment of marriage as opposed to cohabitation. You don't have to really love one another to start shacking up. No, but to love one another, to be married to one another, to cleave to one another, It takes commitment, and that's why so many marriages break up today, is because there is that lack of commitment. But God's ordination is that when a couple gets married, that it be for life. Yes, God intended for one husband, one wife, and for it to be marriage till death separates. And God's plan cannot be improved upon. Now, again, I say man is the provider. God ordained it. The Bible teaches us that if a man will not provide for his own, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. And a man who really and truly loves his wife and loves his children, as the Bible teaches him to, will want to provide for her. Notice what the Apostle Paul said in his letter to the saints in Ephesus, as recorded in Ephesians 5, beginning with verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Now, The Bible says here, and I've just read it, how that a husband is to love his wife as Christ loved the church. Can you picture Christ abusing and misusing and mistreating the church? Of course not. He loved the church so much that he gave his very life for it. And 
husband, you are told, we are told, to love our wife as Christ loved the church. And again, he loved the church so much, he gave his very life for it. And we are to love our wife in like manner. So a man who really and truly loves his wife is going to want to provide for her. He's wanting to protect her. And he's wanting to give her the very best that he possibly can. So man is to be the provider. But that does not mean that the wife doesn't have a lot of responsibility. She has the responsibility of guiding the home. And... I have said before, and I say again, whenever Christ gives someone responsibility, he gives them the authority to carry out that responsibility. So whenever the Lord said for the wife to be a provider and keeper at home, and for her to manage the home, he gave her the authority and the ability to do so, and the husband should recognize her place and her authority. I've said numbers of times it makes no difference to me where the bed is, whether it's in this corner or that corner. What I'm interested in when I go to bed is that I have a bed to sleep in. And if the wife wants to rearrange the furniture in the living room, well, let her do so. That's 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 no problem to me. She is to manage the home, and she is desire, desirous of making it inviting and something that we can be pleased with and enjoy. God bless her in her efforts and in her labors. So she has grave responsibilities along with the husband. Man is to leave father and mother, I say, and he is to cleave to his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And that's not limited to the sexual act. They are to be one flesh in desires and aims and in purposes. They are not to be working against one another. The husband is to treat his wife in a way that she can appreciate and look up to and respect her husband. There is more to fatherhood than just being responsible for conception. Being a husband to a wife is one thing, but being a father to children is an added responsibility, and a grave responsibility it is. And I say there is more to fatherhood than just being responsible for conception. Notice what the Apostle Paul said again in Ephesians chapter 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and in the admonition of the Lord. So, fathers, it is a grave responsibility to be a father. And your responsibility is not limited to providing a home, food, clothing, education. It also involves spiritual training. And for a father to be the father that he really needs to be, he needs Christ as his head so that he can love his wife, love his children, and provide for them and be an example for them and to them. Yes, the husband or the father is presented in the scriptures as also the leader in the training of the children. Again, Ephesians 6 and 4, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and in the admonition of the Lord. The father should first be an example and a godly example at that. I remember a story that I heard of a man, an unsaved man, who left his house one evening to go to a nearby bar. And he heard something behind him, and he turned and he looked, and there was his little son following him. And he said, where are you going? And the little son said to his father, I'm going with you. And the father stood there a moment He stepped back, he picked up his little son, 
and took him back in the house, and he said, you will never follow me to a bar, and he never went again. So I say the father should be an example, and for him to be the godly example that he needs to be, he needs Christ in his own heart and ruling his own life. Fathers should be an example in regarding leadership and headship, because those children are going to grow up. And one day, they are going to leave your home and establish another home. And they need the example live before them. They need to be taught how to be mothers, to be wives, to be husbands, to be fathers. They need to be taught that not only by word, but they need to be taught that by example. Now, we come to another part, which is kind of touchy for some people, but the father should be a disciplinarian. Yes, he should be a disciplinarian. I'm not talking about cruelty, and I'm not talking about abusing children, but I am teach, uh, speaking about teaching them obedience and to see to it that they do obey. And from time to time, there will be the necessity of some correction. So being a father is not a privilege, it is a responsibility. The father should take a leadership role in teaching his children about God, about the plan of salvation, about the church, about conviction and morals, and in living the life of the Christian in general. Yes, this is a grave responsibility, but if you will do it, you'll have God to help you. Heavenly Father, we pray that you'll bless these thoughts to our precious congregation today. Make them a blessing to souls. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It's been a privilege to share another Way of Truth broadcast with you. We do trust that it has proven to be a blessing. Our mailing address is the Way of Truth broadcast, Post Office Box 88, Hagerstown, Maryland, 21741, USA. The Way of Truth broadcast, Post Office Box 88, Hagerstown, Maryland, 21741, USA. Our email address is truth at fred.net, truth at fred.net. And our webpage address, www.wayoftruth.org, www.wayoftruth.org. There is a place on our webpage where you can send us a message. Also, a number of our broadcasts are there for you to download and listen to, and a number of issues of our monthly Way of Truth magazine. So we invite you to visit our webpage, www.wayoftruth.org. And now, this is Alvin and Craig inviting you to be with us on our next broadcast. Yeah.